We move on. This year's division is in surf culture. And our inductee is David Carson. Now, I, I had to do my homework on, on David. I met David, uh, he was a judge at the OP Pro when I was a, an MC back in 1984. And I uh, didn't think much of it that this guy's career is off the charts. He, he's done stuff that is just amazing. We have two East Coast media people that have just done international things. And last year's, or two years ago, it was Phil Roberts and this guy. Look at the way he's dressed. He makes a statement. <laughs> <laughs> but first and foremost, I want to let you know that he's a surfer to the bone, and he's still surfing. He lives down in Tortola. He doesn't want anybody to talk about Tortola because the surf is really good there. <laughs> that's, that's what he told me. But he started surfing in Cocoa Beach, Florida. His first board was an O'Hare, and he surfed behind the old satellite hotel. And this, he, he told me that Johnny Cash used to play there. So that was an important spot. He rode for Claude Codge and surfboards. And he, he loved the boards because they had great colors. And it was all about nose riding. He loved it. He actually, at 14, was a writer for a surf column in a local newspaper called Surfside Slam. He moved to California and uh, had a good amateur career and quickly moved on. He was one of two California surfers to compete in the Smirnoff Pro at Sunset Beach. He appeared in several ads for Canvas by Caton, Hang 10, Wetsuits, and a few others, and rose in the pro ranks of the WSA and surfed in the 4A division. That's his surfing accomplishments. He has his own signature model with Infinity Surfboards and a fin through Rainbow Surfboards. I don't know how many people know that when you hear what he's done in his career. He was recently named one of the top five most influential designers by Graphic Design USA Magazine. Beginning with his work as art director at Surfer Magazine, he turned the magazine world upside down. His first issue created so much negative feedback, everybody couldn't <laughs> believe what this guy had done. And uh, Dick Meserol let me in on that. He said he, he blew minds, but Dick was smart enough. He looked at it and said, this is freaking great. <laughs> he turned the world upside down in the 1990s. His work can be considered postmodern. He is largely influenced by the dirty grunge movement and the design trends of the 90s. Carson, he, he never, until he was 27 years old, had never heard of the term graphic designer. Can you imagine that? Wait till you hear what he's done. His work became well known in the larger world of the 80s and early 90s through his cutting edge work, Escape, Sporter, and Surfer. He later started his own magazine, Ray Gun Magazine, a lifestyle music magazine, and went on to start his own design firm, the David Carson Design. He has written and co authored a handful of books characterizing design trends. David and his work have been featured in Newsweek Magazine, a front page article in the New York Times the London-based creative review magazine dubbed David Carson Art Director of the Era. The American Center for Design in Chicago called his work on Reagan Magazine the most important work coming out of America. This is overall. His work on Beach Culture Magazine won Best Overall Design and Cover of the Year from the Society of the Publication Designers in New York. He's recognized by media in the world stage, not just the surfing stage. It's just amazing what he's been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. He continues to be active in the surfing community, working for Quicksilver, Suicide Girls, Samsung, Adidas, Nine Inch Nails, Pepsi, Toyota. He's moved into commercials and television. He was quoted by the Museum of Modern Art as probably the most influential designer in modern times. Ladies and gentlemen, David Carson. Thank you. I, I think hearing the inductee before me, it, it makes some of this stuff about uh, culture and 
print design maybe seem not so important, but uh, I'm very stoked to be here. Um, yeah, I, I, as was mentioned, I started surfing in Cocoa Beach, Florida, behind a satellite beach hotel, um, which was a very cool old hotel. Uh, as mentioned, Johnny Cash used to play there. It, I remember it had a really weird smell. I used to go in there after I, <laughs> after I surfed as a little kid and get a candy bar, and it's just wow, what is that smell? I probably don't want to know what that smell was. Um, but I lived across the street, and I can remember taking my little uh, Stingray bicycle with my first board in O'Hara, Pat O'Hara, rest in peace, um, which would have been, you know, nine six maybe with a with a. Uh, uh, stingray bicycle and the problem was when you came to the big road with four four lanes and you had to look both ways so it was a real issue um, <laughs> most of the time I made it um, so I attended Cocoa Beach High uh, just for four years but pretty formative years with people like Claudie and Gary Proper and Mike Tabling and uh, on and on uh, it was a pretty magical time to be uh, learning to serve, basically. And one thing that struck me, uh, being a young Grom, that I was, is all these top pros, they all went to California, uh, which seemed like a good call. It seemed like, well, that's pretty cool. And they all went, and, but what surprised me more is that they all came back. And as a junior high school surf guy, I couldn't understand, why, why'd you come back? Why'd you come back? And I think it took me, moving out there to start to realize why they had all come back. And when the space program stopped and we went back to uh, California with my family and I enrolled in high school there, all of a sudden there were all these groups and they all hated each other and they didn't hang out together. There were the bikers and the surfers and the football players. I'd just been at Cocoa Beach where everybody did everything and it was great. And it really was different. And I started to realize, okay, I'm starting to see why they all came back. The, yeah, the ways are good, crowded and cold, but good. Uh, and they all came back, and that, that kind of stuck with me over the years. Um, I uh, um, later redesigned a Surfer Magazine, as, as was mentioned, and, uh, and to unanimous approval and love. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of hate mail. I was at Surfer Magazine and, uh, you know, which by the way, if you had told me when I was at Cocoa Beach High that one day I'd be art director of Surfer Magazine, I would have been, I'd still be off the ground. Uh, but, uh, but what struck me it was Surfer and this redesign and uh, it was, there was a lot of hate mail actually. I had to go and get the, uh, uh, the mailbox of the editor, Steve Hawk, at the time, and I would try to get the mail before he did because there was so much hate mail <laughs> coming in about this thing. But within a couple of months, it was no big deal. One thing that I've always thought defines for me the difference in maybe West Coast and East Coast surfing, one little way that, that I've noticed, and maybe because I've been involved in publishing and magazines, is we used to do the column and surfer about, uh, I actually forget what they call it, it might have been, but basically the gossip column. And it would be like maybe one column on one page and with a couple highlights of contest winners and that would be it. And to me what has always identified a, a, an important part of, of the East Coast is in ESM, the surfing magazine, was there, I don't, I'm sure they didn't call it gossip section, but the news where you got page and page of highlights and everybody got their name bolded and you got to hear all about whoever did whatever and it was a huge part of the magazine and to me that kind of summed up the difference on the, of the two coasts and um, I, I still feel that very strongly today. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's it. No, no. It's, oh, is that what it's called? Blah, blah, blah. No, it's true, true stuff. Um, so anyway, I just... Uh, you know, I'd like to think that I, I'm getting this award because of my innate surfing ability. Um, <laughs> and I'll pretend that and, and probably tell other people that for, for many years. Um, uh, my current innate surfing ability as well. Nothing to do with this art graphic stuff, but whatever that is, you can't read it anyway. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm honored and more important, I'm really stoked. Thank you very much.
my home. Yeah, sure. <laughs>